Welcome back to SB Life Soil. In today's video, I want to talk about calcium and an easy way we can extract it out of a common household food. Now, calcium is extremely beneficial to your garden as it is an essential macronutrient and provides the building blocks of strong cell walls for all of your plants and greatly helps photosynthesis and overall health of your crops. Plants that lack in calcium will show deficiencies in their older leaves and it will appear usually as brown dots all over the top of the leaf. Now, an easy way to gather calcium is to look no further than what's probably already in your kitchen. Today we'll be using eggs. Eggshells are one of the best sources for calcium and can be used a couple different ways in the garden. Now, there is a common misconception with eggshells and short-term leafy plants where it was presumed you could actually just stick eggshells on top of your soil and expect to get calcium that way. Well, I'm sure over time, and by time I mean years, it would eventually break down into a soluble form. The problem is that most forms of this calcium that we are trying to extract are the forms of calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is non-soluble for plants and plants will not be able to absorb the nutrient. So, in order to make the calcium soluble for the garden, we have to take a weak acid. And a weak acid that we like to use in the KNF world is all organic vinegars, usually made from fruits or anything organic that was once living. Now, what this will do is when mixed with the eggshells, will actually cause a reaction producing a liquid that's plant available calcium. In this KNF world, we call this water soluble calcium, or commonly referred to as WCA, and it is used primarily in the transition phase. So now that you know a little information and why calcium is important and why we need to extract it out of the shells before we use it, let's show you exactly how to begin making your own water-soluble calcium. To begin this process, we are first going to want to take our eggshells and remove all of the filament from the outer layer. This layer won't be going in our vinegar mix, so I recommend before piling your shells in a container to remove the inner layers of each one as you use the eggs. This will require a nice and hot heat source. So I am using my outdoor grill, but this can be done on an oven inside as well. As I said, we like to get it nice and hot, so make sure you have plenty of coals or wood for the cooking process. We will let this heat up, just make sure to keep an eye on the flame and any surrounding brush. Crushing your eggs will allow a better even browning and will provide more surface for your vinegar to extract the calcium. Once the heat source is hot, we can take a cooking pan and put all of our cleaned up eggshells and begin the long process of toasting these to the right color. Make sure to spread it evenly on the pan to get good surface area and not to burn one part and not cook the other. You can crush any remaining big piece that you see to make it smaller to allow more surface area for the vinegar. After 10 minutes, you can see the color is starting to change from that pearl white to a brownish appearance. This is a great sign we are getting closer. As it gets closer to being finished, make sure to watch it carefully and try not to burn any pieces. It is okay if you do, as I ended up burning several in this video. After 20 minutes, we should have perfectly toasted eggshells ready to be mixed with your vinegar. After you have toasted all of your shells, you want to gather a vinegar, preferably one with the mother or a homemade fruit vinegar, your eggshells that have been completely toasted, and a container big enough to hold both with a breathable lid. For this one, I'm using a coffee filter. Now the ratio for this mix is going to be 10 parts vinegar to 1 parts eggshells. I usually end up with about a 3 4 cup of broken down toasted eggshells which will leave me at about 3 and 3 4 cups, or about 4 cups of vinegar. Go ahead and fill your container with the eggshells. I'm using a container that will allow the vinegar to have more surface area over the shells, so use a container that will provide the best results. 
Once your eggshells are in the container, we can add the living vinegar. Make sure to pour slow as the mix will have a reaction and bubble due to the acid mixing with the calcium. You will want to give this a good stir or mix to make sure all of the shells are as covered as possible. If you did end up burning any of the shells, they will float to the top, just like you see in this video here. You can see this is the immediate reaction from putting the vinegar with the eggshells, and this will only increase as you leave it to further ferment. As it bubbles, you will see fragments of eggshells get sucked up to the top and brought back down. This is the process of the acid making the calcium available for use. Because this is highly reactive and produces lots of carbon dioxide, we want to use a breathable lid so it can't expand in our container. So take your lid and cover the vinegar up so no bugs or anything can disturb it during the process. Now, after five to seven days, the bubbles will stop and the liquid will become still. This is when the process is complete. After five to seven days, strain the shells out and toss to the side. Now you have your water-soluble calcium. This mix can be used as a foliar spray at 3 fourths to 1 teaspoon per gallon or as a soil drench at 1 and a half teaspoons per gallon and stored without refrigeration for a whole year. Well, that's about it for water-soluble calcium. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for new videos coming soon. Take care everybody.